we're going to consider the popularity of planting trees to absorb carbon. It sounds like a, a great solution to global warming, but is it too good to be true? Well, we did a bit of research and a bit of maths, and we put together a short animation to make the numbers a bit more digestible. So, enjoy this. So what is carbon sequestration? Let's recap on the carbon cycle. Plants take in carbon dioxide. They incorporate this carbon into their roots, stems and leaves as they grow, and in turn release oxygen back out into the air. Trees, being big plants, take in and store a lot of carbon as they grow. As long as they are alive, it's stored in their trunks, branches and roots. This is carbon sequestration. When they die, some of the carbon gets released back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, and some becomes soil carbon. In the right circumstances, over long periods of time, carbon from these dead plants gets trapped in layers of sediment and becomes fossil carbon. The fossil carbon we are burning now in the form of oil, gas or coal was sequestered millions of years ago. By burning this for heat or power, we are adding to the carbon in the atmosphere. Because trees and plants do such a good job of absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen, they are often described as a nature-based solution to global warming and climate change. But do the calculations really add up? If we plant a lot of trees, can they absorb enough carbon to counteract our emissions and help us reach net zero by 2050? In different parts of the world, with different climates, trees grow at different rates. On average, in the UK, a tree absorbs 10 kilograms of carbon dioxide per year for the first 20 years. Based on the optimum density of 1,000 trees per hectare, this equals 10 tonnes of carbon dioxide per hectare per year. So now let's consider what emissions the trees are up against. The estimates we're going to use for the UK are called territorial emissions. Territorial emissions are the emissions from businesses based in the UK, activities of people that live in the UK, and land-based activities such as forestry and farming. They do not include emissions from air travel, freight, shipping, and those from goods produced in other countries. The current territorial emission rates are 400 million tonnes of carbon dioxide per year. So how do the current tree planting targets measure up? To absorb these annual emissions through tree planting would take 40 million hectares of land. However, the UK land mass is just over half of this at 24.3 million hectares, so it is easy to see the problem with this approach. Of course, we are not going to plant trees on every scrap of land in the UK. Currently, farmland accounts for 70% of UK land use and the need to feed ourselves locally is also a vital part of aiming for net zero. Many other pieces of land are vital habitats and we know that in some areas tree planting would increase carbon levels such as planting on peatland. The current area of woodland in the UK is 3.2 million hectares. This is 13% of the land in the UK. At 10 tonnes per hectare, this 3.2 million hectares sequesters 32 million tonnes of carbon dioxide per year. But this is only 8% of our current territorial emissions. So what about the trees the government wants to plant? The government's target from 2020 was to incentivise the planting of 30,000 hectares of trees per year until 2050. 30,000 hectares for 30 years equals 900,000 hectares. If this pledge is fulfilled, the woodland area of the UK will increase to 17% at 4 million hectares and will sequester 40 million tonnes. Even with this extra tree planting, this is still only 10% of our current territorial emissions. If we're serious about getting to net zero, it's clear we simply cannot plant trees and use them as a nature-based excuse for business as usual. But let's look at what the figures tell us if we were to reduce our emissions as well as exceeding planting targets. The good news is that territorial emissions have been dropping and are approximately 44% lower in the UK now than at 1990 levels. 
If this is a long-term trend and the UK emissions continue to drop in line with IPCC guidelines, the contribution of trees looks more significant. If the UK were to achieve the 19% tree cover that the IPCC recommends, our math tells us that trees could be absorbing around 26% of the remaining emissions. At just over a quarter of our remaining emissions, this becomes a significant proportion. The math clearly shows that planting trees to sequester carbon whilst continuing to emit greenhouse gases at current rates is futile. We need to dramatically reduce the carbon dioxide we emit whilst continuing to plant trees to help absorb the remaining emissions.